after surviving the accident of, of, of my life, I realized that what I had experienced during that accident were these questions of, did I live and did I love and did I matter? Hey, it's Josh Ellis and Shelby Skirhawk, and welcome to this bonus episode of Success Insider. We are excited to introduce you to our special guest host for this episode, Mr. Brendan Burchard. Brendan is going to be sharing some of the power lessons that can be found in Coach John Wooden's Pyramid of Success. So we hope you enjoy this special bonus episode, but don't worry. We'll still be here every Tuesday so you don't miss a thing. Enjoy. Hello, everyone. It's Brendan Burchard, author of the New York Times bestselling book, The Motivation Manifesto, founder of High Performance Academy and contributing editor to Success Magazine. And it's such a thrill to be here with you to talk about the path to greatness. How do you reach your highest levels of success in life, no matter how you define it? How do you rise? How do you climb? How do you make it through the tough times to reach your fullest potential and to contribute to those that you love and lead and serve? That will be the topic of this episode as well as two other episodes I'm doing in this series, all inspired by a path to greatness, frankly, that even I feel like I was set upon in my life because of one of my great mentors in life. And that is the legendary coach, John Wooden. Now, if you're hearing my voice for the first time speak about Coach, it's a thrill and an honor to be here with you on Success Insider. It's honestly, a, I feel in my heart right now, there's a, a, just a, a, an excited tension because my life was so dramatically changed by subscribing to Success Magazine, by following the people on, on the covers of the magazines throughout the years. I know you're probably a lot like me where you've really dedicated yourself to self-mastery and to success and to great amounts of service to the world. And that's why you work so hard on yourself and why you listen to podcasts like these. So even as we get started on this conversation about the path to greatness, I just want to give you that <laughs> virtual high five. If I could give you a big bear hug and congratulate you and say, you know what? Good for you for taking time out of your busy life to listen to something that might give you that inspiration, that change point, that, that transformative thinking that allows you to rise into your full potential and to help other people along the way. So it's an honor to be here with you. Now, uh, a lot of people may not know me listening to this, and this is my first time really um, taking over, I guess you will, the Success Insider podcast. So uh, a little about me. Um, most people know me around the world for my personal development and high-performance work. Um, blessed to have now over 100 million video views of my uh, personal development videos online. Um, not any of them have any, you know, videos of cats or dogs or good jokes. I'm really not funny at all. And so I just put out videos teaching personal development concepts and I'm blessed that they, they took off and they resonated with people. A couple of New York Times bestsellers out there in the world now. I'm blessed to have such an awesome audience of, of readers and viewers and contributors. And as you may have heard, our, our High Performance Academy program, our multi-day seminar continues to be sold out. And we've just been really, really blessed in helping people learn to become their best. And a lot of people ask me, well, Brendan, who are your mentors? And, and how did you learn to do all of this? And, you know, why are you doing this, even this episode right now? And I'd like to share the big why with you and the big how with you by just describing a scene. Um, imagine a tiny little dorm room in college, and uh, uh, not a very clean one. <laughs> and imagine a rickety old brown recliner that has holes in it and it's dirty and you got it for 15 bucks or so, I think it was, at the Goodwill store when you got into that dorm room. And you're in college and you're hoping to do good and, and, and things, but uh, you know you need some perspective about life. And it was from that need of wanting some perspective about life and how to improve my life that I was introduced to the work of Coach John Wooden. Now, I, I'm sure you heard about Coach Wooden. He won 664 games of college basketball. He's the winningest coach in college basketball history. He won 10 national 
championships, NCAA national championships, over a 12-year period. He won seven championships in a, a row, and those records have held for decades. And frankly, it's very likely that those records will never be broken again. How does somebody take uh, you know, new teams and diverse teams of people year over year, literally decades, and help them become the greatest in their sport? How does one person, while he, he's sort of the constant, you know, those teams would come and uh, go to college and they'd win championships and they'd leave, but an, another new freshman class comes in, a, another new team comes in, and he's always got to prepare these folks to get to their best. How did he do it? We're going to talk a lot about that in this episode and in future episodes, because I bet you are probably trying to lead your family and make them a team, a, a cohesive unit. You know, you'd probably have, you know, people on your team who are responsible for taking your brand, or your business to the next level. They, they're directly impact your own success or revenue in life. And I bet there's people who come in and out of your life who you're always trying to positively impact and lead. I think you can learn a lot from coach wooden. And I say that from a perspective of that kid who was sitting on that dirty, brown, ugly recliner in a very sore spot of my life. You know, if you've never heard my story before, uh, I was a fairly happy go lucky kid. I, I grew up, uh, with two incredible parents in Montana and I don't know how they did it. You know, two parents working full time doing their darndest for us four kids, but you know, it, it was tough. We didn't have a lot of money or, or resources or connections and, and mom and dad worked super hard. And, um, I, I, people say, Brendan, you're lucky. And I will say, you know what? You're right. I lucked out on the parent train. So to all those out there who are parents and who love their kids and do a good job with them, I, I honor and respect you. Cause I know that's hard. And I, I, I'm a result of good parenting, but by the time I hit the end of my high school career, if you can call it that, <laughs> I don't know if anyone actually says high school career, but by the time I finished high school, I was miserable. Um, I was in a relationship with the first woman I ever loved. We were high school sweethearts and we decided to go to college together. And even right before we got to college, we were, man, we were in a bad space in our relationship and we were always fighting and it was just, you know, young love and young ego and, and just, we just weren't meshing. And by the end of that first semester in college, uh, she had cheated on me and it broke my heart. You know, my whole life was tied up into that relationship. We, we went to college together. We had friends together. We tried to stay in the same dorm together, went to the same classes together. And, and my whole identity was tied up in this person and our future together. And when that relationship fell apart, I fell apart. And by the end of that year in school, I fell into dark depression and ultimately into suicidal thinking and had planned to take my life. And then I lucked into a situation in which I had the opportunity to get a summertime job outside of Montana. In fact, outside of the U.S., down in the Dominican Republic. And I took a summertime job and I went down there and was still a fairly miserable kid. But one night I got in an accident, a car accident. A friend of mine was driving the car. Long story short, we flipped the car several times. And in that experience of flipping the car, something happened to me. I, I had a series of moments that made me reflect on my life. Ultimately, later on thinking about what had happened in that accident, I realized that I was really evaluating my life. You know, I really think that at the end of our lives, we're all going to, if we have a moment of cognition, we will ask questions of ourselves to evaluate whether or not we're happy with how our life went, you know? And for everyone, those questions might be different. For me, what I learned is when I was reflecting after surviving the accident of, of, of my life, I realized that what I had experienced during that accident were these questions of, did I live and did I love and did I matter? I remember I was a 19 year old kid. So when I had the accident, I didn't like the answers. Did I live? I'd been thinking about taking my life, not living it. Did I love? I was so broken hearted that I hadn't felt my heart beat in months. And did I matter? 
man, I was just a selfish and hurt 19 year old kid. And so I didn't like the answers to my questions, but the questions gave me, I think one of the great gifts of life, which was intention. And I don't want to go on and on about my story because you, you can read about in some of my books. I'm sure you've seen some videos or you talk, hear me talk about in my own podcasts or seminars. But the reality is that accident became the turning point of my life. I was miserable and unhappy. But then after the accident, I got sort of mortality motivation, if you will. I realized I'd been given a second chance at life. And I was like, I'm going to earn this. And so... When I went back to college after the accident, I got committed to changing my life. I didn't want to be depressed Brendan anymore. I didn't want to be sad Brendan anymore. I didn't want to be lost and, and trapped in other people's expectations or bad relationships anymore. I wanted a higher quality of life. I knew that I wanted to live fully and I wanted to love Openly, I wanted to make a difference. That's been my mantra for, you know, what now 20 plus years of my life. Live, love, matter. If you see my Facebook page, 5 million folks have kind of rallied around and, and become our fans of that particular message. Live, love, and matter. But I didn't know how to live. You know, I didn't know how to love and I didn't know how to matter. I was 19. I knew those were important, but I didn't know how to do it. And that got me into the world of personal development. I just had the hunger and the, that mortality motivation that said, I want to live an extraordinary quality of life. I didn't know how, so I started reading personal development. And that was a critical time in my life. And that's why I described that scene to you because that dirty $15 recliner, I think it was, I don't remember, maybe it was cheaper than that. It was nasty. <laughs> but that recliner is where I started reading personal development. I remember how it feels to sit in that chair and to have epiphany after epiphany when I was reading, you know, the Dale Carnegie's and Napoleon Hills, when I was getting into Earl Nightingale, when I was reading, uh, you know, just the, the greats. So when I was reading like Og Mandino and Wayne Dyer, you know, when I was getting into the stuff of just how to manage life, uh, you know, uh, Richard Carlson of don't sweat the small stuff. When I was getting into this stuff that really helped shape how I viewed life and opportunity, whether it was a Jack Canfield or a Brian Tracy or love with Marianne Williamson or Debbie Ford, or those people who just gave me insight into, into kind of where I wanted to go both personally or professionally or spiritually, whether it was studying Christianity or it was studying Buddhism or it was studying, you know, uh, Deepak Chopra. Like I was just taking it all in. I was at that. I, I bet you remember. Do you remember that time when you really got into personal development? And maybe that's right now for you. And if it is, I'm honored to have you hear my voice. But if you've been there before, uh, you know, you, you remember the first time you read some Ralph Waldo Emerson or some Benjamin Franklin, or some Khalil Gibran. You, you remember reading Think and Grow Rich, or Paulo Coelho, the alchemist. Uh, Paulo's a great, dear friend. Uh, you, you remember reading Norman Vincent Peale, The Power of Positive Thinking. Some of these classics, you know? And I got into those. And through that, somehow, very quickly, that returning semester, I read a book about Coach John Wooden. Because when you talk about success... Here was one of those successful guys. I mean, dynasty, unbroken over decades. How did he do it? And I read how he did it. And it was very transparent. He did it because he knew the path to greatness. He had built what he called the pyramid of success. Coach John Wooden took generation after generation of kids to the top of the championships. But not just to win things in sports, because this isn't really about sports. He taught them how to have a championship mind, a championship life, a championship character. And because he did those things, these men and these people who he influenced and touched because of his career as a coach went on to live extraordinary lives. We, we know Coach Wooden from, you know, leading Kareem Abdul-Jabbar or, or Bill Walton, but we also know him because... He was such a good human. He was as celebrated as much for teaching success as he was ultimately for winning games. 
And so that's how I got pulled in. Um, reading about him is what ultimately got me into reading Success Magazine because I just followed the line. And, you know, it just, it was a changing day when I got introduced to how he thought. A winning championship kind of coach saying, hey, let me tell you about success, kid, is how it felt to me. You know, he was like that grandfatherly figure that I didn't quite have because I, I lost my grandfather when I was very young. And yet here's Coach John Wooden saying, success is peace of mind attained only through self-satisfaction in knowing you made the effort to do the best of which you're capable. Success is peace of mind attained only through self-satisfaction in knowing you made the effort to do the best of which you're capable. There I am, you know, 19-year-old kid going, have I given my best? 19, 20 years old by that time going, you know, what else do I got in me? I mean, can I, am I really showing up? He'd talk about make each day your masterpiece. And I thought, you know, am I making my days magical? Because, you know, I wanted to go to bed at night and say, hey, today, did I live today? Did I love today? Did I matter today? But the truth is, I'm like everybody else. It wasn't like every day was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, I had tough days. Still do. But the nights that I can say, yes, I've lived my intention today. Those are the days I feel like it's a masterpiece. And when I go to bed, I'm fulfilled because that self-satisfaction is there that I gave my all that day. I learned that from Coach John Wooden. And I learned that from my father. I learned that from my mother. Incredibly hardworking people. And maybe that's why I related with Coach John Wooden. Because what he was really talking about wasn't super fancy. Wasn't, uh, you know, something. He, he was really espousing values that I bet you believe in. He was telling you things that I bet you already know. But sometimes you need to put them into play. I like to tell people all the time that, you know, common sense isn't common practice. And that's why so many potentially great people fail to reach their potential. Coach Wooden would say it's because they don't practice the fundamentals. And I know that there's many parts of your life that you know already how to improve, but sometimes you don't do it. And we're all guilty of that. I, I bet there's a relationship right now in your life you know you could give a little more into. I bet there's some projects in your life. You're not really approaching it like making it a masterpiece because you feel like it's a task. But Coach Wooden would tell us, hey, hey, never confuse activity for achievement. Focus on what matters. And so what I'd love to do in this series is share some of these lessons directly with you that I learned from Coach Wooden and how they made a difference in my life and how I use them as an extension of some times of what I teach, of some of my favorite quotes of his, of how so much of what I've learned in working with some of the world's most high-performing people. Well, one of the original high performers I ever studied was Coach John Wooden. And what you have to understand is he attributed so much, not just to him, but rather this methodology he had. I've learned a lot about the, the need of us. We, we have to have a methodology. We have to have like a, a, a standard operating manual or procedure or process for life. We need routines that keep us on track. And what kept him and his teams over 664 games crushing it was this thing called the pyramid of success. Now, I'll be talking about it in future episodes. In this one, I'm going to only focus on one of them. And I think it's so important for us to look at because he really considered it the, the basis of everything. It was really the first cornerstone of the pyramid of success. When he talked about uh, the entire pyramid, when he had to narrow it down to the all-time starting five best ideas in success, this was the first one he talked about. He believed this one made all the difference, and that one he called industriousness. Industriousness. Now, industriousness is a, is a fancy way to say hard work. And let me share with you coach's own words to get you connected to this. He said, I chose industriousness 
Um, this is how he's describing it as the first corner stone of the pyramid of success uh, and why he chose it instead of work. He says, I chose industriousness to make it very clear that it involves more than merely showing up and going through the motions. Many people who tell you they worked all day weren't really working very hard at all, certainly not to the fullest extent of their abilities. An appetite for hard work must be present for success. Without it, you have nothing to build on. That's the words of Coach John Wooden. And whoa, have you ever been in a place in your life when you were just going through the motions? I had been there. There's been points in my life in the last 20 years, fully invested, full time in personal development. When I'm coaching other people, when I'm on stage, when, when I'm doing my best, even working with high performer, I've noticed the times that I've been really intense and there and fully present and working hard in the way he's talking about. And I noticed the times I've gone through the motions. We've all gone through the motions. You know, I've, I, we, we go through the motions with our family sometimes, with our team, with people even, you know, we're in charge of. It, it happens. But what he was always trying to bring it back is getting people to be focused more and be more industriousness. And the way he talked about it was in that fashion that I related to because my dad was always saying, work hard. And they worked really hard. I mean, we grew up in an economically depressed Irish mining town that was a tough place to live. And my dad had spent... 20 plus years in the United States Marine Corps. He went to Vietnam on three tours, got all shot up over there, came back and, you know, struggled to take the family back out to Montana. And at the time I remember, you know, him working three plus jobs and going to school so that he could get, you know, some more education so that he could get paid more. He was one of the hardest working guys I ever met. And maybe that's why I really related with Coach Wooden. I'm sure that you've had mentors too. And maybe their voice isn't here, but people like Coach Wooden's voices are here. And that can give you some inspiration. Coach Wooden said, many athletes have tremendous God-given gifts, but they don't focus on the development of those gifts. Who are these individuals? You've never heard of them and you never will. It's true in sports and it's true in everywhere in life. Hard work is the difference. Very hard work. And I just love how he talked about that because I just look, wouldn't it be great if once in a while we just stopped what we're doing and go and asked, where am I dogging it? Where am I not showing up with enough work to prepare and to practice and to make this moment my masterpiece? Where am I just going through the motions? Because I think if we can identify those places where we're half-hearted, half-interested, half-in-the-game, leading at half-skill, half-intensity, those are the places of real transformation. Sometimes we all think we have to make this huge, dramatic life change. And I'm like, actually... If you just gave more into those situations that you're already in, but you really showed up with that hard work, maybe things could change. And we don't have to imagine that everything's going to be perfect along the time because another thing Coach Wooden taught was almost all good things come through adversity. That those difficulties, those challenges, those loss, those disappointments you might be feeling right now, it's okay. Trust. Good things will come. Keep working. Keep believing. Keep at it. You're stronger than you think, my friend. I was lucky to have this type of influence in my life. And and I know you don't need a dude like me to be like, hey, go work harder. But I would challenge you. I would urge you. I would ask you to notice where you're going through the motions right now. And then ask Who needs you to show up better? Because sometimes we'll go through the motions for a long time. And then when we see somebody or meet somebody or fall in love or realize that somebody needs us or some cause needs us, when we connect with that thing outside of ourselves, we work a little harder, become a little more industrious, a little more resourceful, and we go at it. 
these are things that I've been blessed to learn in my life. And many of them were fired off at that young teenage impressionable mind by legendary coach, John Wooden. Now I'm going to be doing a few more episodes taking a deeper dive into his pyramid of success, what he called the all-time starting five. In the next episode, I'll be talking about enthusiasm, how to get it, how to keep it, especially when the chips are down. I'll talk about conditioning, mental, moral, physical conditioning. We'll talk about fundamentals and what those are in your life and how to amplify your tension there so you can succeed faster. And most importantly, I feel we'll talk about team spirit. How do you leverage the power of team so that you can amplify your success, so that you can climb, so that you can give, contribute, and serve? There is a path to greatness. Coach Wooden called it the pyramid of success. We'll be continuing talking about it in this episode, in series, in some things we'll be doing online that you'll be able to be a part of. Just go to success.com forward slash podcast to learn all about an actual event that I'll be doing talking more about these that you can watch for free. With all of that, I hope that this was a good kickoff and just some good reminders, maybe a little bit of inspiration, maybe a good place to look at a few areas of your life because there is greatness in you. There is something that I know that stirs within that says, I want something more. I want to give more. I want to feel more. There's maybe something in you that realizes that life is a blessing, my friend, that, you know, at the end, we're all going to ask questions to evaluate our life. Maybe today, maybe tonight, you might bust out a piece of paper, your journal, and just ask, what questions might I ask at the end of my life to gauge whether or not I fulfilled my potential? What questions might I ask at the end of my life of myself to gauge whether or not I'm actually happy with my life, if I was happy with my relationships, if I was happy with my contributions, what would your questions be? What would those questions be? Because I think the questions that you're going to ask at the end of your life, they're like a secret doorway to your greatness because they give you intention. If you know the questions you're going to ask at the end of your life, then you're going to live your life with intention. So you'll be happy with your answers at the end. All I ever wanted to do and what brought me to Coach Wooden was I wanted to live and love and matter, and I just want to learn how to do that better so that if I ever faced the end of my life again and I thought about those questions, I could say, I did. I did. I did. I hope you've enjoyed this special episode on Success Insider. It's an honor to be here with you. It's a privilege to get to share my voice with you, and I hope in some way that it served you. Until the next episode, my friends, visit success.com forward slash podcast, and every single day of your life, know that you are on a path to greatness. Show up. Make each day your masterpiece, and as always, go out there, live fully, love openly, and make your difference today.